Okay, man, are you ready to go? I'm ready to go. Now, now come on, now crank this motherfucker up. <laughs> It is time to get strategic because we played a Project Triangle Strategy, the demo, uh, the new Final Fantasy Tactics-like from Square Enix. Um, in some ways, it's a sequel to Octopath Traveler. In some ways, it's a spiritual successor to Final Fantasy Tactics. In some ways, it's lesser than both games, but we'll see, <laughs> we'll see if that holds up. So before we get into that, as always, I am joined by Pete Busby. Hey, hey what's going on? Fun fact for this week comes from the deep sea. <gasps> so this is from an article in Current Biology from July of last year. It's actually pretty current. But this is about fish in the ultra deep sea, and they are super black. They've evolved this incredibly non-reflective skin as a means of camouflage because things are dark down there. So just to put it in perspective, right, black paper, I'm assuming these people mean construction paper, Reflects about 10% of incoming light. So that's that's actually pretty bright. Whereas these ultra black fish reflect between 0.04% and 0.05% of light. So that's super dark. To put in even more comparison, the ultra black materials that MIT made, basically Vanna Black, reflects 0.005. So these fish are 10 times brighter than that. But they are a hundred times darker than construction paper, and cool. they have one hundred fewer PhDs than the MIT people who <laughs> made that fancy. Stupid <laughs> nerds! Should have just asked a fish. Look, but, if we just sent these nerds to the bottom of the sea, they would have evolved <laughs> it over centuries. And there'd be fewer nerds. Uh, the article is just called "Ultra Black Camouflage in Deep Sea Fishes." Pretty straightforward if you want to check it out. Excellent. And we are joined also, as always, by M. Paladino. Hello, M. Hello. Uh, I'm fending off my cat, who is very interested in getting near my microphone. <laughs> uh, so if you hear anything, that's her. Here she comes. <laughs> what's what's her name? I don't know Samson. Her. That's a good cat name. That is yeah. a very good cat name. Yeah. Anyway, other than that, uh, excited to try out a game I didn't have to pay for, and... Maybe I won't pay for it. Uh, this might have been my fail. Yeah, we will definitely get into it. But before we get started on the game and our normal shenanigans, we have a guest today. We are joined Hello. by by uh, Matthew Rory of GiantBomb.com and whatever support email you send there. <laughs> Not recently. Holy mackerel. Uh, it's been a really bad month for support at the site just because uh, there a lot of red venture stuff going on and everything is taking a very long time so if you hear this uh and you have not gotten a support email answered please let me know um i'm getting stuff like two weeks after it is emailed which is not great at all oh no so, yeah unfun yes yeah, so um hi thanks for having me though of course thank you for joining us to discuss this throwback game at did what is your familiarity with the tactics final fantasy tactics ogre tactics that sort of genre where you got grids and then you shoot I at enemies. Played Ogre Tactics way back in the day uh, on the was, that was a SNES game, right? I think it was. I think um, so. uh, Final Fantasy Tactics. I played a bit of. I think that was a. I forget. That was first on Game Boy Advance or something, or was that a SNES game too? So um, Original Tactics was a PS1 game, and then there was okay. Tactics Advance, which was a Game Boy Advance game. Okay. And A2, um, which was a DS game. <laughs> Yeah, it's been a while. I, I, I delved into some, uh, of the, I delved into some Disgaea, Disgaea, uh, yeah. as well. That kind of the same tactical game, but, um, it's been a while. It's been a hot second. I've been more of an XCOM kind of person, um, if you're talking like tactical stuff. Um, but so it's, yeah, it has been, it's been a long time. I, I remember bouncing off of the first Tactics game. For some reason or other, I, I know all of them, the same kind of thing with like uh, Fire Emblem and, and Advanced Wars. Nintendo had just a, a huge array of these tactical games, and they all seemed a little more difficult and a little more punitive than I have wanted to uh, go through at the time they came out. And um, 
But I did, I did, I have seen a bit of this game and it, it, I did play a, a fair amount of, not even a fair amount, but a, a decent amount of Octopath Traveler, which looks almost identical to it and from a graphical standpoint. So I think I've got the, the bases covered in terms of what they're going for here. It's always good to see more. I know, I know the people who like the Final Fantasy Tactics are uh, fervent for more of that style of game. So it's nice to yes. see them bringing it back. We are a fervent bunch. So before uh, we talk about the game proper, our normal housekeeping, you can get in touch with the show at Deep Listens Pod on Twitter, deeplistens.libsyn.com. We have our comment sections and Deep Listens Podcast at gmail.com. And apparently uh, someone also purchased a vanity URL, which I believe is now deep, deep dot LOL. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, and let me see if I can find what the... Uh, what the vanity the vanity email address is for the show i believe it was uh questions at deep dot lol but let me see if i can find it real fast i had a, so many roller coaster tycoon tycoon questions and it really ah it's uh d- 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 questions at deep dot lol also works should also forward to deep podcast at gmail.com so use that if you want um now we have multiple email addresses. This is what happens when you do a show long enough. You get weird URLs. Um, you can also support the show on patreon.com slash deep listens. Um, that would get you access to our discord and to uh, our space for hanging out with the community. Um, and if you were to do so, you would be on potentially the discord report. The discord report. Boop, 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 boop. That reminds me, I need to re-download the Discord report music. Uh, uh, this week on the Discord report, uh, it was a weird week for video games. I don't know if you were uh, around for February 25th on Twitter, but a lot of stuff went down, which I have taken notes on, and I will recite back to you. Uh, for those who don't know, Kingdom Hearts Union X was cut. Uh, uh, don't you mean be- Union Cross? Yes. Okay, good. Yeah. Union Cross. Uh, branding is important. That's going to be an offline game now. Uh, Final Fantasy VII is remaking everything, uh, that has ever been made for Final Fantasy VII. Uh, it's going to be called Ever Crisis. And that's even going to have the Before Crisis video game that was for phones that you can never play again until this thing comes out. Final Fantasy VII Remake is getting a Yuffie chapter. Uh, that's going to be two chapters. On to weirder stuff. Uh, Post Malone covered a Hootie and the Blowfish song for the Pokemon Anniversary album. Don't know that's why. First sentence that is. <laughs> See, you you stole my obsession of the week. Ah. Uh, you monster. Well, I'll cut that one out. So you no, get it's fine. Surprise. It's fine. We, we can talk about it now. So, Pete. Uh, before we yes. finish that roll call of things that happen on the 25th, the cursed day, Post Malone, what is your familiarity with Mr. Malone and his work? Uh, Post Malone is like a worse version of G-Eazy. I think it's probably the best way I can put it. That's pretty bad. G-Eazy yeah. is pretty, pretty bad. Yeah, I like Post, Post Malone, Malone more. more. I think it's got a better voice, but I haven't really heard a lot of his stuff. It's better singing voice, I think. Um, yeah. Yeah, but what... G-Eazy dated Halsey. So. That's a great point. Points for that. Um. So what would you say if he, he changed the words to Hootie and the Blowfish sacred song, Only Want to Be With You, and I don't know how to I, feel about it. First off, I don't like that song. I think it's bad. It's a bad hey, song. And Hootie and I, the Blowfish are a bad band. Go to hell. How hey, I'm, you? I'm taking up this. This is my, my hill. I'll die on it. Fine. Fair enough. He changed the words from the Dolphins Make Me Cry to the Cowboys Make Me Cry because he's a Cowboys fan. That was yeah. the only thing he changed uh, in a song for the Pokemon anniversary, uh, which all of what these all of these po- things are very strange. So it was it has to do with Pokemon because it's the 25th anniversary of Pokemon, and you know what song was popular 25 years ago? Hootie and the Blowfish only want to be with you. Yeah, po- Post Malone really thought that one through. That's a that's a good plan. So that's my central question here: is not that Post Malone could record this song. It's who approached who? Do you think the Pokemon company came to Post Malone? Who picked out that it would be Hootie and the Blowfish? Um, the song itself contains chip tunes at the beginning and the end, uh, just like for a bit, but not like a lot of it. 
So I just really want to know who did the production. How did this come together? Uh, I don't know if Hootie and the Blowfish are very litigious about their licenses. They don't seem like they'd be. Uh, uh, I think Darius Records pretty laid back about it. He's big into country now. Yeah, uh, he's been doing country music for a long time, and I, I from what I hear, he's he, he doesn't mind playing the hits when he goes to the uh, concert. So I'm curious if he was involved at all or any of the. the you said the Blowfish, they're all. It's a interesting thing. Yeah, I I just. It feels like a real confluence of events. Like, I wonder if he had a, a list of songs he could have covered for the Pokemon anniversary. Like, could he have done Eiffel 65's I'm Blue? Did, could he have picked whatever he wanted? From, See, now that's a good song. I mean, it's no My Console. As someone who listens to that album way too much. Yeah, I just really... It's a staggering thing that that got made. And I keep looking for the... Because, like, it's positioned as on the 25th anniversary album, but it's the only song on it. So I don't know if there'll be more to come. Maybe we'll be threatened with yet more songs covered by uh, Post Malone, but we'll see. Machine Gun Kelly will jump in somewhere. Oh, boy. Can we get Black Bear in there? Just Yellow Wolf? Let's just get them all. Let's get all the dirtbag 20-something white rappers. We'll see. All right, and please continue. Uh... I just want to say, only one of Pikachu was right there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they God you, huh? But also, that might be misconstrued. Anyway, also, speaking of Pokemon, uh, Pokemon fans got two new games uh, in the Sinnoh region. Oh, they, which, I'm sure they were happy about it. Yeah, they, uh, no, actually, despite having asked for this uh, for about 13 years, uh, they were not pleased for various reasons, particularly the art style, because Pokemon fans are cannot be satisfied. Uh, there was a fun little uh, chart in the Discord. Yeah, it described each of the different Nintendo fan bases by their status as people. And yeah. uh, Pokemon, it was Pokemon and Smash fans were in a category all their own that just said, I believe, insatiable beasts that will not be <laughs> will not be happy. Gluttons who would not be satisfied with all the riches of heaven. Yep, that was it. Summarizes it pretty well. Um, other than that, wrestling is strange. Uh, there was a death match last night, and I learned all about death matches, uh, where the ring explodes. Apparently that's popular in Japan, or it was. I'm not sure if it still is. The WWE tried to do that, and it was about as weak as you might expect. I believe it was AEW and not the WWE. These are apparently different things. I don't know. I know. You shouldn't. You're better it's for all not the knowing. Same. Jeff and ZP, they know something about whatever's going on there. I do not talk to them in the other show <laughs> if you want to learn more about wrestling. And other than that, the GB series coming up. Yes. Is it spoilers to say what you're doing for that? No, so that's a good thing. So, Rory, thank you, you being on convenient. The the Giant Bomb Community Endurance Run is coming up in a month now, almost exactly. Uh, April 9th through 11th, we are going to be raising money for Pencils of Promise once again because last year we took a, a detour into a COVID charity because, I mean, everyone's lives took a detour into COVID. But this year, because uh, we have – not a, a gigant. I mean, we're still in the middle of a medical health, medical emergency, but vaccines are starting to roll out. People are starting to get their lives sort of back on order and educations were derailed for a year. So going back to an educational charity felt right. So running from April 9th to 11th, uh, the community endurance run will be happening. Um, I'm going to be doing a few different things. I'm going to be starting off with a Final Fantasy trading card game ladder of champions, I'm going to be starting, think think like a Mortal Kombat ladder. I'm going to start from players who are not great up to basically a world a player who went to Worlds, like a world U.S. Hmm. champion. So I'm going to be taking on people of increasing quality using a finite set of decks. I cannot reuse them once I've used them. And I'm going to work my way up from from, you know, the lowest of the low to the highest of the high. And that's the goal. That'll be fun. I'm going to be streaming too as well. I'm not sure what yet, but I'll find something dumb and challenging to do, I'm sure. Um, I usually go for about six hours in the middle of the night, and I'll probably stick with that schedule to get that done this year. So I'll, I'll try to find something dumb and uh, 
or really hard. Uh, maybe I'll go back to Sekiro or something like that because I that game just bounced off it. But it, it's always a good time. People have a good time. Uh, yeah. If you are listening to this, uh, please tune in and maybe maybe sign up to. Is there a uh, sign up form somewhere yet, or is it? So uh, there'll be some posts probably by the time this uh, is published. There will be a post on the forums. Um, awesome. The team has been created already, so people who are already kind of in, who have done it before, uh, mm-hmm. have been notified to you know get their events onto the calendar and join the team. Um, so yeah, if you would like to participate, please do so. Um, reach out to me. You can do so on the site. D- DM me that pinguino on the site. Uh, you can also reach out on the forum thread. I, I, you know, be able to help you out there. If you can't or do not want to participate, feel free to donate. Um, it's to a good cause. It's a Pencils of Promise is a charity we've worked with now for quite a few years, um, and we've sent a lot of kids uh, to school. They give they use 100% of the money that's donated to them for their programs all of the money that they raise for their salaries is handled via gala events that the main group runs themselves so you can know that the money that you're donating is going to the programs and not to someone's salary which um is cool it's a really cool way that they run their charity $21,252 last year. I think uh, a lot of our fundraising stuff, we did a good quarter million on the site, but I think a lot of it was down. You know, people are not just needing charity, but a lot of people are out of work too. Hopefully we'll uh, be bigger and better this year. Uh, not that, not that it's anything to be ashamed of 20 grand, but, uh, hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll blow that out of the water. Let's, let's be optimistic about it. That's the hope. Yeah. And so like the other stuff we're doing, uh, I'm going to be doing a FF2 Nuzlocke run, uh, racing ZP. A uh, friend of the show, co-host of Off the Deep End. So I'm going to be playing Final Fantasy II, uh, but if any of my characters at any point die, I cannot revive them. Um, and I'm going to try and get through as far as I can. And we're going to keep doing this over and over and over again until a timer is done. Is we haven't decided uh, Amer- how long. American 2 or Japanese 2? American 2. Okay. Oh, wait, no, no, no. Remember- Japanese 2. Japanese 2. Okay, Japanese Furion. 2. I was going to say. I, when I played uh, FF... God, sorry, That's my dog's four. barking his head off. When I played four, I think for the first time, um, when it came to America, uh, the first SNES, um, I remember uh, wandering around a desert, not being able to find a way out, just grinding unintentionally for like five hours. And by the time I finally found the exit, I was just not missing it entirely. I was so overpowered compared to the rest of the game that I just kind of breezed through the rest of it. So just that, that'll be your secret. Just grind as much as you can right out the gate. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, Final Fantasy II is really weird because it's ahead of its time in a lot of ways. It's kind of got the Oblivion system where the more you ah. do things, the better you get at them. But that leads to really weird incentives. Like the best way to play the beginning of the game is to have your characters attack themselves for ah, about nice. a half hour to 40 minutes because that increases their HP and their strength at the same time. Um, and you don't get HP or defense unless you take damage. Huh. That's like eight, you know, Final Fantasy VIII was the same way where you wandered around like drawing cards until you had 99 of everything. Every time you found a new card to draw, just kind of sat there grinding, which is obviously the funnest way to play an RPG. Just yeah. doing the same thing over and over again. And it's especially fun when if one of your characters dies because it's very easy for them to punch themselves to death. Uh, you just need to basically start the game over. So that'll be a joy. Um, and then on Sunday, we'll be taking it a little bit easier. We're going to be playing Roller Coaster Tycoon. I'm going to be giving ZP uh, prompts. That we have devised some devious prompts of what sort of parks he must he must create with different goals depending on the prompts. So um, there'll be donations there to pick what prompts we do and in what order. So yeah, that's that's our GBC our plans. Um, I'm sure that we'll lasso in M and Pete for some of this stuff, and it'll be a good time. Uh, so without further ado, let's start talking about Project Triangle Strategy. So M, you picked this game. What is this game? Project Triangle Strategy is, uh, it looks like Octopath Traveler, which is the chair RPG, uh, that is on the Switch. Kind of has a sprite, uh, style with these isometric, uh, kind of tilt shifted backgrounds. Project Triangle Strategy is the same, uh, basic, uh, visual style, uh, but is it, it is a tactics RPG. Uh, instead of just a RPG. You are playing as the citizens of... we got to get all the proper nouns in here. Glenbrook, or Rivendell, or River Run. Yeah, it's the kingdom of Glenbrook. There is an iron mining town, which is the Grand Duchy of Ace Frost, and the Salt Lake Holy State of Hyzant. Hyzant. So, 
Hyzante. If, if this was Game of Thrones, you've got your, you've got your, uh, oh, dang it. What's the northern town? Winterfell. Winterfell. Yep. You got your Winterfell. You've got your King's Landing, the holy state of Hyzant, and then you've got Glenbrook, which is River Run. That's, that's Game of Thrones, right? Yeah, I might have switched them. I might have went uh, King's Landing as Glenbrook and the Holy Land of High Sand as what's the Sun one in the desert? They're over on like oh. the other side. Oh, uh, Marine. I think that's even further. Shit, uh, we're doing a really bad job of Game of Thrones. Well, right I, now. I, I, the one where to... Spear Guy comes from. A spear Guy. Ah, oh, Spear oh. Guy. Right. Dorn. 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 There we go. Thank yeah. you. And with the assist. <laughs> Yeah, it, Glenbrook is supposed to be based around trade, and it's got a river running through it. Um, Ace Frost has an iron mine and is cold, and then Hyzant is in a desert with a big wall, and they have salt, um, and they're super religious. So there's three nations. Wouldn't you know it? There's conflict uh, between them, and they are in the timeline of the game or of the demo. It is post the... Was it the Iron Salt, the Salt Iron War? Salt Iron War. Yes, the Salt Good Iron name. War. Good name. Where the three, these, th- this triangle of cities, uh, fought each other, and now there's peace. But wait, maybe the peace won't last. Perhaps. No. Is Say this demo enough. start at the beginning of the game? Do you know, or is no. it more of a chunk in this the middle? Is... <laughs> Chapter six and seven. I okay. wish it started at the beginning of the game or anything resembling the beginning of the game. There's um, a disclaimer at the beginning of the demo that says, look, you're not going to know what's going on. Except <laughs> that. Yeah, it says Just that. Just try to focus on the uh, vibe we are going for. Don't worry too much about understanding the story is literally what the thing says. It says that, and it also says, also we dialed up the difficulty for this game that you've had no tutorialization for. Uh, so that you can get more enjoyment out of the demo. Did it really say that? Yeah. I missed that part. Yeah, they dialed up the difficulty a little bit. So uh, some of our comments about the gameplay might be tinged with the fact that it's not balanced the way it will be balanced when the final game is out. Um, and also, you know, we're learning uh, these mechanics on the fly. They they throw you into three fights or two fights, a maximum of three fights um, that are not like tutorial fights. They're not just having you, you know, attack one dude with one dude. They jump you in with like seven characters. Uh, they jump you off with stuff popping off, really. Um, so uh, the kingdom of Glenbrook has been invaded by the Grand Duchy of Esfros because intrigue. Pete, do you know what that... Could you make sense of why? Other than uh, power like grab? Why, why he was taking over? Yeah, like I, there's... There's a stated like a reason. Yeah, there's a stated reason and a fake reason and a real reason. It seemed like. Yeah, so the fake reason seemed to be that somebody killed somebody else. The, the prince but, died. I the think. prince died. Yes, but the guy who's taking over the usurper actually killed the prince. But there's no real way to prove it yet. It's intrigue, palace intrigue. Yes. I think I got most of it. Yeah, someone died in Ace Frost, and they're blaming Glenbrook, but it's a pretext so that they can invade. Um, the first, like, ten minutes of this demo, are you just mousing through uh, people talking about events that you haven't seen? Good voice acting, though. Yes. Very good voice acting. Definitely very good voice acting. And uh, Is there voice acting in the—is it just in cutscenes, or is it throughout the game? Because I don't think Octopath had any voice acting, if I recall— I played with my sound off, so I don't oh, okay. actually hear any. <laughs> I'm just curious. The other two. It's mostly just in cutscenes. There is some like introductory battle dialogue. I don't remember if there's any intra battle okay. dialogue. Uh, I'm just curious. I, there definitely was. Um, I think that it is voiced, though. There's not much of it that I could tell. Um, though most of these battles that were we played are story, but like scripted battles. I don't know if there's going to be, you know, FF Tactics Advanced style grab a battle whenever you want sort of stuff in this game. But, um, yeah, there's definitely voice acting in some of these fights. So, as Frost, they roll in, they uh, basically say, we're in charge now. You control Prince Roland and Senoa? Senora? Yeah, Senoa. Serenoa. 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 Heir of House Wolfort. 
I cannot emphasize enough that there are so many proper nouns in this game. Yeah. In this demo. And they explain none of them to you. You just have to pick up on context. Uh, yeah, so Saranoa is the head of one of the kind of loyal houses to Glenbrook, one of the royals of Glenbrook. Um, and you have to protect this prince, Prince Roland, from uh, the ro- uh, roaming forces of Aesfrost. So you start by trying to run away, and this is where you get your first battle. Um, it's kind of a pincer attack battle. You're trying to battle your way through a gate on one side of a bridge, and you've got enemies that are constantly reinforcing from behind you. So, M, what did you think of the mechanics here? So this is like an FF tactics style game, but they've made some unique choices on how the mechanics work. Yeah, uh, everything feels a little bit clunkier than tactics, which was very uh, focused in its uh, mechanics. Uh, this one feels a little bit more like it's going to be adding stuff on later, hopefully, um, and we're not seeing the full picture. Uh, one of the things that I believe was in the trailer was this kind of um, uh, Fire Emblem style uh, system of elements where you kind of like, if you use a fire attack on an ice tile, it'll create steam and then that'll cause some extra effects whenever you do lightning in that space. But you don't have access to all the elements. You have ice and fire. Uh, so I never actually saw any interplay with those. Um, so I don't know if it's just something that they are going to try and shove in there uh, over time or if it's like a later thing when you get deeper into the story. Other than that, uh, it plays pretty straightforward. Uh, there's no like Fire Emblem style, you know, swords are better than axes, are better than spears. But it seems like it's got that system, but it's underneath the structure. Uh, there's no like chart that'll tell you this anywhere. Maybe it's in the tutorial that we didn't see. There is some something is determining like these enemies are weak to fire uh, and it'll show a little weak on them. But I had no way of knowing what was actually effective or not. You have to just do trial and error basically. And, or if it shows up when you highlight them with a ice attack or something, you're like, oh, okay, I'll use this then. But it doesn't seem as though it's doing significantly more damage than most regular attacks. Yeah, it's maybe 50% more. It's not double damage or anything like that that I can tell. Um, The only way to actually double your damage is to do, like, a back attack. There's facing in this game. Uh, This is another holdover from Tactics, where at the end of your turn, you decide which way your character is going to face, and then if you get hit from the back, it'll be an automatic crit, uh, which doubles their damage against you. And then you could also be, like, pincered. So if there's an enemy on either side of you and one hits uh the other one will hit as well so they kind of like can double their damage in that way too yeah you can get extra blows Mm -hmm. and this for the purposes of the demo they really gave you a bunch of individual characters that kind of represent archetypes that you would expect in like a tactics game so it's not like in FF Tactics, Tactics Advance, XCOM, you know, other games of this genre, you have a bunch of, like, maybe you have one or two named characters who are special, uh, but you get a lot of characters who are just, you know, random mooks that you can give various jobs and, you know, level up as you see fit. In this demo, everyone was a named character and every character only had kind of one role that they could play in battle. Now, it's unclear if they'll be able to level up in, you know, branching trees or if there is a job system going on here. Uh, But it meant that you basically had eight individual characters that could do one thing, which, I don't know, uh, Rory, when you play these style of games, do you like min-maxing your teams? As best I can, yeah. But I think um, I I played, I think the last one I really got into was one of the Fire Emblem games that had like permanent death. Maybe they all do, I'm not really sure, but that's always turned me off. Yeah, they all do. Yeah, so yeah, I, I, every kind of XCOM and, and honestly, every kind of RPG in general, like CRPGs, especially Fallouts and the Skyrims, I really do try to. I, I'm less about role playing than I am about being very effective at murdering stuff, for the most part. So yeah, I, I really do try to uh, get to a certain point where I feel like I'm 
putting myself in a position for success, but I, I, I do that to, uh, to get through the story for the most part. And then once you got, start talking about weird stuff like, you know, uh, the monster arena in Final Fantasy X, where you have to basically grind forever to get your team to a point where you can do it, I usually ignore that kind of stuff. But, but yeah, I, I generally in these kind of games, I try to get as many advantages as I can. Um, even if it winds up me, not to the point of like, like I said before, that me, me grinding that desert in Final Fantasy II was a mistake more than anything else. But, um, I do like to have, a leg up on combat and things like that, which in so far as it's possible and convenient to do. My favorite tactics games like XCOM, Final Fantasy Tactics Advance are, are definitely two of my favorites. I really like being able to build team comps, you know, come up with unique interminglings of skills. Like, you know, you get your, your three snipers and then you've got your assault character and maybe you've got a heavy and, you know, you've got one support and now you've got your murder squad in XCOM or uh, in Tactics Advance, you know, maybe you've got an archer and then you level them up to become an assassin. And now they've got, you know, back attacks that just insta kill people and stuff like that. And so building my party as I see fit and kind of um, coming up with my own play style is how I really intend to enjoy these games the most. And in this demo, because you only have eight characters and each of the eight characters is an archetype, if I like the way that, like, there's a spy character who uh, her special ability is to have two actions, uh, so most characters can move and then attack or attack and then move and then their turn is over, she can move and then attack and then attack again or, you know, use a skill and then attack. That was cool. I liked having that much freedom, um, having those extra options uh, when I'm controlling that character. But she's the only character who plays like that. Um, there's one character who's just like a paladin sort of dude. He draws aggro and then he, um, you know, blocks with a shield. I don't like those types of characters in most games, but he was one eighth of my party and had, I had no choice about it. It's a lot of characters. Um, I'm assuming the people you're fighting, the fights you're getting into have more people on the opposing side. Um, that sounds yes. like that sounds like these rounds can last a little while or yes, the, uh, standard. Yeah. Really? standard sort of fire emblem procedure. Yeah. Reinforce rolling reinforcements too. I will say, you know, to your point, that you can't like do much with the characters in terms of leveling or sort of team composition. But I will say it's nice that each of them have their own sort of definable niche. Like you have, you know, your standard mages, you have archers, but you have another person who can create ice walls. So you can sort of wall off people. You can sort of, you know, bisect the arena. Later on, you get a shaman who can control the weather, which I don't know how useful it's going to be eventually, but it's a cool skill to have, I guess. You do? Who? What? What? Uh, yeah, you can get, you can get, it depends how you answer questions, because people join your party based on your convictions, but you can get a shaman who can control the weather and shoot lightning. She's basically Storm what? the X-Men without the flight. Okay, hold on. The, uh, this is after the first battle, right? You get yes. a second character? Yes, uh, yeah. prior to the the village battle, let's call it. Okay, I did this. I did the chapter seven twice uh, from each angle. There's a decision point in between, uh, and I got Medina, who is a healer uh, who uses items. Yep, that's uh, she what I can, got. She can like throw items to people. Okay, I did and, not get her. Yeah, and then that was when I did the bad decision which i guess we'll get to in a little bit right um and then if i did the good decision i got julio who was like uh he gives tp to people and yeah. he's like got a i don't know a short sword or something he's not like a fighter my guess is julio is automatic and the other ones sort of depend my point being though okay. in fire emblem you get a lot of characters that are basically just like oh here's a guy on a horse with an axe Here's a guy on a horse with a lance. You got two horse guys. Whereas, like, in this one, it was nice to see distinct, unique skill sets, even if, at least for now, we couldn't do much else with them. Yeah, I, I, I'm kind of torn because I think that the choice of having each character kind of be a unique person um, that you care about is interesting. You know, if they go with the permadeath uh, sort of thing that these games can sometimes revel in. Um, losing access to an entire skill set when they die raises the stakes a whole lot. It, it's really a trade-off, right? Do you want to have more story resonance and have these characters really embody certain archetypes and, and have real distinct roles on the battlefield? Or do you want to maximize customization and creativity for the player? Um, so they, you know, if I want to have five assassins and just be all murdering all the time, 
um, am I able to do that? And this game, at least in the demo, uh, seems to be leaning more towards option A, which I, it, it'll be interesting. Yeah, I generally prefer customization myself. That's one of the things I like about the later iterations of the Fire Emblem games. Do we not know if there's permadeath or not? Has that not been revealed? There isn't any in the demo, which thank God, because I would have been <laughs> shit out of luck really quick. It would just so there be are rolling. Manual yeah. saves or uh, anything yes. between, like, okay, all right. As long as you can do that. I find with games that have death systems, I, I, I am an inveterate save scummer. I mean, I'll just go back and I'd, I prefer to do the, I guess to the point of min maxing, I, I actually do prefer to play these games and not have anybody die, even if I'm not, um, you know, I don't need an S rank on everything and things like that, but I really do hate having, uh, lo- like you say, losing options like that. So, um, I, uh, I tend to reload games when I, but I don't know if it's like inevitable that it, they put you in positions where you basically have to. I know I, I, the last time I played a Fire Emblem game, I just, I found it so difficult that I, I kind of gave up for that reason, but at least there's manual saves in case you're like me and crazy and don't want anybody to ever die. Yeah. And I, you definitely can in this demo. It, it's a pretty hard demo. Yeah, so um, you have your first fight. It's on a bridge. You're getting pincer attacked. Um, once you make your escape from Glenbrook, you do get, like, some dialogue choices at various points. Uh, like, I think at one point uh, one of your knights is like, should we protect the prince or should we, you know, protect ourselves? And then you have, you know, three choices like protect the prince, protect ourselves. Maybe we should do both somehow. And depending on which one you pick, it sounds like that's what guides you towards whichever extra character you end up getting. Like, I got Item Lady, I guess Storm from X-Men is in here, and uh, some sort of TP boosting guy. Um, oh, we didn't even go over what, what TP is. M, do you want to explain the TP system? Because it's different than how most of these games handle abilities. Yeah, uh, the TP system seems to be you have a set number of TP uh, mm-hmm. when the fight starts. And this is used to access your uh, abilities that are more advanced than hit thing with sword. If you want to do like any of the magic requires TP. So your casters at a certain point will only be like hit things with their book more or less. And it's used for basically everything. The only way to get it besides that guy is to have um, time pass. You're basically trying to get as much to do your big attacks as you need and then do a big burst. Yeah, so there's not really... In this demo, there aren't super moves necessarily that require a bunch of TP. There's a few moves that will require three, so you kind of can save up three turns worth of actions to use them. Uh, but you can imagine that in the future there will be more turn, turn-based turn moves, things that really ask you to save up TP. Um but it's a, it's an interesting way of budgeting your skills. It means that you can only use so many skills at once. Um, if you want to save up, it means a character needs to basically only do basic actions like attack and move for multiple turns in a row instead of like an MP system like many of these yeah. games use um, or a f- finite use system like XCOM. Mm-hmm. I will say I think this is uh, straight out of like Octopath Traveler. I only played it for about 20 minutes, but... Uh, I do recall them having a similar system where it's not like MP or uh, whatever, but you have. Was a, it a charge up kind of thing? It's been a I while. Think so, been, yeah. Yeah. I, I mm-hmm. hit a wall in Octopath where there was a, a boss really early on. The game was really interesting to me because it, you could go pretty much anywhere you wanted to right off the, right out the gate and get your characters together. But some of those paths seemed pretty difficult for the amount of people that you had in your party because you didn't have a full party right off the bat. Um, right. Is this the same the same developer, same people? I'm assuming it's uh, it's all Nintendo, I know, but um, I'm curious if it's uh, the exact same developers or or not. Pretty sure it is. I think so, so this is Super uh, Jump. This is published by Nintendo. Was it developed by Square, or is it is it a Nintendo game? Did I misspeak at the beginning? I'm not sure. Let's find out. Yeah, let's find out. It says publisher Nintendo on uh, Nintendo.com with no mention of Square Enix anywhere. So I could be wrong. It just felt really bravely defaults Square Enix y. So. This is definitely a Square Enix game. I know I read this. Okay, but definitely published by Nintendo. Yes. So yeah, the, uh, it's a, it's an interesting system. Like, you need to basically budget your time, um, 
appropriately. And it means that it, for a lot of these fights, it, at least in the demo, you can't just unload. You have to wait. Uh, which when there's like 30 people involved in a fight or 20 plus people involved in a fight, it, it means a lot of just waiting around for yeah. your characters to be able to do things. Um, which is kind do, of my biggest complaint about this demo. How do fights start? Is there an initiative kind of thing, or is it is it kind of the set? Are you yeah. are there random encounters, oh, or is it kind there's of all set, set piece battles okay. and the turn orders based on your speed stat? I see. So it's almost like Chrono Trigger, sort of that way. Uh, Without you, bars. Yeah. What did you think of the uh, system of turns? Because coming from Fire Emblem, where you can choose any character, this did not feel awesome. What do you think? Uh, I mean, coming from FF Tactics being my, or XCOM being kind of my touch points on the tactics systems, this felt normal. Like, this is how those games work. But it's just such a slog in 20 plus characters. And everything has maybe twice as much health as I feel they should in this set of the demo and that might again be the difficulty being turned up but it just meant that these battles took a really long time and trying to manage the turn order was just really finicky like i kept using moves that felt like they should be very powerful and they just weren't and you know waiting around to do it again it didn't feel snappy the way i like in these kinds of games if the point too is i mean it's right there in the name if it's wait is it triangle tactics or strategy i've already forgotten strategy Stra- if the point is strategy, like setting up your turn, like this sort of limits your tactical options. Like if I know what's coming, if I know I can move people as I wish, it makes it a lot easier for me to plan my moves in advance than if I sort of have to think like, okay, I need to use this unit in isolation because there will be nobody to back them up for the next, I don't know, four red dudes. Yeah, and like... The first battle is pretty straightforward because they give you basically a super unit who's protecting your back, and you just need to worry about, like, five guys. Um, the Dawn Spear. This, yeah, the Dawn Spear. So he's he's got your back. Uh, but then the second battle, it really depends. So you get two options, basically. Uh, there's, there's kind of a section in between where um, your characters need to decide what they want to do, how they want to proceed. Um, you can either turn over the prince who you've tried to protect – um, to the as as frosty as frost folks um, as they demand and you know save your town or you can uh, fight and try to protect the prince and depending on which route you go th- down uh, you get a different final final battle for the demo um, but the way that you can pick which battle you want to partake in is kind of a, a fact finding mission I guess you go out amongst the people. And you gather evidence to try and convince your fellow party members about what course of action you should take. And depending on who you talk to um, and what dialogue choices you make uh, when you talk to your compatriots, uh, they then vote on what they should do. And if you win the vote, you can do what you want to do. Um, but if you don't convince enough people, you'll, you have to go with whatever democracy decides, which, again, very weird for a monarchy to work this way. Definitely. What would you uh, decide to do? I said that they can take the prince over my dead body. Yeah, that seems to be the uh, one it wants you to do and what I figured you would choose. So I decided to say fuck him and hand him over. So what happens if you say fuck him and hand him over? It actually diverts the plot significantly. I played both (laughs) routes. Pete, what did you do before I get into the... So had I actually been the monarch, I definitely would have given him away. I'm not going to sacrifice my whole people for this one dude but it's sort of clear what the story wanted so i did save him yeah uh if you choose not to save him you hand him over uh everyone thinks that you are a traitor and then the guy who has taken over the kingdom sends you to another house the uh i don't remember the name this is the one thing that's not on the is it article i'm looking at is it the super loyal house or the sniveling coward house? It is the super loyal house. Uh, okay. The house that has like fields of wheat. Uh, it looks really serene. He sends you over there and you're like, okay, we're going to go over there and we're going to talk to this guy. You show up and the guy has set fire to all of his fields. And he's like, uh, if you want it, come and fucking take it. 
then you have to fight him. Uh, and that is the alternate path where he has a whole bunch of archers with flaming arrows and he is shooting you from like really high. Uh, this game has a tier system where, uh, if you are a ranged unit, you can fire longer range, uh, if you are higher up. And so he's on like the 20th story and you are starting at the ground floor and it's a real slog to get up there. There are elevators that you can use to get up there to make it a little bit quicker, but he's shooting you the entire time you are coming up to him. So it's pretty rough. Uh, I had to do this fight three times, I believe, because I fucked it up. It's kind of uh, dark. You kill the guy who has fought for his home. He thinks you are a traitor. Everyone else sees what you have done, and they think you're a traitor. Because you have committed acts of traitorism, which they are correct. You have turned on them. Yeah, I mean, and, they're not wrong. Yeah. And then, oh, and the prince who got turned over, uh, he's going to be executed by the guy who's taken over the throne. So. Is this just like the end of the game? Like, no. you give up rolling and they're like, game over. No. You're obviously lost. It's implied that this is just a path diversion and that Later on, like, it will keep going further and further away from what you guys did, which I don't know how they're making, like, you know, all these branching paths. It's got to come together at some point. Would you say it's octopaths? Oof. I mean, probably more than that. I mean, octopath was branching story, right, Rory? Um, I, I don't recall, like, I, I don't know if I got far enough to see the, um, effects of it. I, I think I, I don't even re- remember buying it. I, I, I remember playing enough. I played for about a good, I'd say, ten hours or so. So you start off. I think you pick a character that you want to start with, and uh, you, then you start traveling the the world map to uh, collect the rest of the party. Uh, I think I got. Oh man, I, I, I don't, I don't think I got enough to, to know whether it's branching or not. I, I hit a boss that was just uh, a very slog of a fight. It was uh, poison-based, so you had to oh, constantly um, use a turn of your character to heal your poison, uh, and then you kept on, you know, it just took forever to, to get through that fight. I think I had tried it a couple times, and it took me like an hour, and then by the time I did get through it, I forgot to save my game afterwards, and I think I turned off the switch, and I would have had to go through it again, so I think I just stopped playing. Um, but I don't recall if there was branching paths or not. I think yeah. there at least you can branch at the beginning, right? You're picking one of many yeah. characters to yeah. to go mm-hmm. with. You have options, but then it makes it um kind of complicated because uh, you really need to have more people in your party to do some of the some of the early fights and as you start off with, you know, one character. I I'm, I'm not sure how it balanced that kind of stuff, but I remember feeling really under underpowered for some of the early fights because you just didn't have a full party yet. Um which was interesting, but it also, when I hit that one specific kind of roadblock and I thought about having to do that fight again, I just kind of noped out. Yeah, so I, I think, Pete, like this is probably going to be, since this seems to be a, a branch off of Octopath, there's probably some amount of this that's going to keep spiraling out. Um, I wonder if they end up with a truly branching storyline or if it's a funnel or one of those diamond-shaped stories where it starts at one point, it fans out, and then it eventually ends up at the same end point. Yeah, like uh, uh, Mass Effect. the Walking Dead sort of situation. I don't know if you've ever seen the uh, gameplay of one of those, but there's a chart online, you can look it up, uh, where it has, like, here are all the branches in The Walking Dead, and then you see it come to a point. It's like all those choices that you've done so far uh, have accumulated into you were in the same spot as if you picked anything else so it could be one of those or it could just spiral spiral out of control i feel like from a development standpoint uh they probably do not want it to spiral because (laughs) that's really hard to account for but there are ways to do it um i don't know so i mean it's it sounds like being a trader sucks um if you're not a trader if you have honor in your heart um, you defend the prince by basically realizing that your city, like the village where your people live, uh, is rigged with explosives, basically, or like traps, booby traps sure. all over your town. 
oil canals. You can just set the village on fire. Yeah, so you can hit certain switches, and that will drop a bit, like raise a big gate around uh, one of the buildings, and then oil will pour out of the building, and then it will burst into flames, instantly killing anyone who's trapped inside. So that's pretty much how you win that fight. You're outnumbered severely, but uh, if you you know, use those traps intelligently, you can wipe a lot of enemy units very quickly. Uh, I I did especially enjoy after you win the fight, like the en- enemy general who's supposed to be super intense is like, I didn't expect we lost, but I didn't expect them to kill their own people. That was really it all messed up. They <laughs> set fire to all their houses. It is a nice bit of like sort of asymmetrical warfare though. Like yes. if you look historically, this is a good example too, like big massive superpowers always complain when people violate the rules of warfare or the rules of anything really because the rules are the things that have set them up to be big huge superpowers in the first place so it makes sense that she wouldn't uh, like think of this as a possibility because the whole rules of warfare preclude it to be a possibility so the empire can continue to succeed yeah she's been She's like, I've got a bigger army. I was rolling into your land. You were supposed to lose because my army's bigger and I'm a better general. And your your party's like, no, we this is our home, and if we lose, we lose everything. So we will we're going to do whatever we have to to kick you out of here. Um, and in this battle, you have the high ground. Um, you've got this series of traps that you can deploy. Uh, it's really set up for one of your characters who's an archer who's on a hawk. So she's super mobile, so flying her around and shooting um, these triggers from distance is kind of what it's set up for. And you've got your ice wizard, so you can yeah, kind of you know, block people in to terrible places and then trip the switch. Uh, but I just found that because this fight had so many characters in it, planning ahead was difficult. Like getting people into the spots where I wanted them so that I could burn them alive, um, it was pretty difficult to do it quickly enough. Um, to take full, maximum advantage. Yeah. Uh, when I did this, uh, I basically had a choke point set up, and then my ice wore off that I was funneling the enemies into the top area where I was going to light them all up. And so they started to move away to go around the shorter route, and that was like, you know, a lot of turns that I had to, you know, start trying to funnel them back kind of uh just emphasize like how long everything takes to do in this game uh if you try to like trick the ai it's gonna figure it out i guess that's tactically good but it didn't feel good yeah i'm used to in these styles of games having uh, characters that hit hard you know like feeling like the choices i'm making are very impactful and everything felt like a slog like you're dealing about as much as your enemies are dealing your characters don't actually have that many abilities in the demo, so there's not that many choices to be made. Like, some of the tactical abilities seem interesting if, you know, these fights were punchier, but because everything takes so long and you don't deal that much damage, I just didn't use a lot of the abilities because they just didn't seem any, or, you know, that much better than just whacking them with a sword. Most of the characters had, like, these kind of supporting abilities that just didn't seem especially useful in this context. So I'll be interested to see how it comes together in the final game, but they need to adjust the damage a little bit. Like, I wouldn't mind if there were more enemies if I just felt like my attacks did anything. Yeah, like, you're doing about maybe 20 points of damage, and each enemy has 100 health. And there's also, like, three times as many as your units, so it adds up uh when they're damaging you uh if you're damaging them it feels like you are even if you're taking advantage of like traps and stuff it feels like you're going to be overwhelmed uh which i was several times yeah i I beat this on my first try but it was with like almost all of my units died in the battle i i survived with like three units left yeah i i literally had i was (laughs) down to the the anna who is your like spy spy and the healer and i was healing anna and anna was throwing uh these little uh items that deal elemental damage and that's how i won that fight was just tossing these fucking rocks at uh (laughs) the general yeah i believe i ended up with uh healer late one of my healers uh, ice boy and um 
the old man who does buffs. Like those, but like when M, you said your characters do twenty damage. Like your hard hitting characters do twenty damage. Yeah, weak that's if they're do one. good. Yeah, if you're bad, uh, they do not that much, and also they will get hit harder by everything else. Because uh, yeah, so. the weak characters are usually the ones that are defensively weak as well. Yeah, like your mages, if you don't have uh, TP for spells, they they hit people with a book and do one damage. So. Like, you have a, what, one-fourth of your party that can't do physical damage at all. Uh, another fourth of your party does very little physical damage when you hit people. Um, I'd say another fourth of your party uh, at least has good defense or, like, some use utility. And then just, like, two of your characters do good physical damage. And it just doesn't present well. But, like I said, this the difficulty seems to have been dialed up for the demo. So maybe this will get rebalanced. So... Closing thoughts, M, are you excited? Like, you picked uh, for us to play this demo. Do you think that it's good? Like, will you look at this in the future, you think? I feel like, um, is that still, like, a pretty early stage? It's, we, we've got a year still of its development cycle. Uh, so things could be, like, shaken up towards the end of there. So i'm not discounting it yet i feel like if they release another demo that has like a different subsection of the uh battles like maybe if there's a later uh battle to look at that would be interesting to see how it's evolved as of now i feel like i could go back to you know fire emblem three houses uh and get the same effect and you know i have the charming characters and that and everything so i don't know it's, I will say, uh, a lot of the story elements have actually grabbed me a little bit more than I thought they would. So I am interested. I just don't know if I'm ready to pay the full price of this game yet, based on what I've seen. Uh, Pete, what about you? Interested? Intrigued? Uh, I mean, I am on the record as a big fan of this genre of game. It's one of my favorites. But at least as we're at like the demo stage... There's nothing this game does particularly well that I don't think other ones have done either better or more straightforwardly. I guess my position right now would be I'm going to keep monitoring reviews once it comes out, but I'm not going to be in the first wave of people to get this game, I would say. Fair. And Rory, any of this sound exciting to you? You know, I honestly, it's weird for me because during quarantine, I really haven't touched my Switch at all. Uh, I have never docked it, but I just have not really felt a huge connection to the console in general. I think for me, I'm always interested in, I, I'm surprised, I, I should probably find it. It's, it's buried in a closet somewhere. I should probably try the demo out, but if I was going to play something like this, I don't like demos that take place in the middle of games. I, I prefer to, like go in fresh to a game. Um, so I definitely will try the demo, but it, depending on reviews, maybe I'll, I'll check it out at some point. Um, I did, like I said, bounce off of uh, Octopath Traveler uh, pretty quickly. So um, this might not be up my alley, but who knows? So I'll, I'll see what the verdict is. Do we know what like a general release date? I assume it's mm, sometime no. this year. Yeah, it just says the demo Next release year, date. 2022. Really? That's weird mm-hmm. to put out a demo this far ahead. Yeah, uh, it was announced at the Nintendo Direct two weeks ago, and um, it's really early on still, which is why I'm giving it a little bit of the benefit of the doubt. But yeah, I don't know why they uh, are hyping it up already. I don't know if they'll be able to keep it up for that long. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's not. Um, it's. I'm always interested in new games, but I'm kind of yeah shocked that it'd be next year. I mean, it's great to have a demo of games in general, but. Uh, this far ahead, I mean, at least it seems like it's pretty competently done, uh, even if it seems a little too difficult. But I don't know. I'll wait for I'll wait for more word later on. I'll put it that way. I don't know. For me personally, I I was not sold based on this demo. I think instead I'll just go back and play Final Fantasy Tactics Advance twice instead. But we'll see. Like they've got plenty of time to try and polish this game up a little bit more. Now they've got a demo out, so maybe there'll be some feedback. But as it stands right now, the gameplay didn't grab me that much, and a slightly grimmer tactics game also doesn't sell me that much. Like it, it feels like they're trying to do more real politique than yeah. in you know this style of game usually. When we mention Game of Thrones, it's really Game of Thrones. Oh yeah, like, <laughs> some of these games are like you know it's a little like Game of Thrones, but this is like 
they were watching this series uh, throughout and taking notes while they were doing it. So this house is like this house in Game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. Exactly. I will say, I will say for this game's benefit, I don't think I could recall the plot of a single Fire Emblem game I've ever played, which isn't necessarily a like downside, but it is something to point out. True, though, like FF Tactics was a great. It has a lot of great story moments in it. So, uh, like the game that jumped off Square doing this sort of thing, uh, in a lot of cases, does a lot of what this game is doing. But this game technically has decision trees. And I don't know if that's going to be a game changer or not. I guess we'll see. So with that, that's everything you need to know about Project Triangle Strategy. Man, I hope they come up with a better name. Octopath Strategy. It's a working title, and it's really uh, not great. They could have gone Triangle Tactics. Yeah, it's alliterative. At least they would have had alliterative. It's a, a working title that's not working very hard. No, that is true. So with that, it is now my turn again to pick what game we play next. Now that I've realized that uh, I have to play a lot of Final Fantasy II over and over and over again so I can execute for the community endurance run, I'm going to try and pick something lower stakes <laughs> than I had originally thought. Um, so instead of going with what I was going to originally pick, I think I'm going to go with my the game I've had on my list for forever at this point. Um, but haven't actually picked. I want to play Super Hot. Okay. Okay. How hot is it? Super Hot. It's Super Hot. Yes. So Super Hot, the shooter that moves as fast as you do. It's a cool-looking game. I have never actually played it. Um, I think I've played bits of it in VR uh, at, like, PAXs uh, during VR demos. So it'll be cool to see it. So next time we'll be playing Super Hot. Uh, Thank you, Pete, as always. Yep. I'm always glad to dive into the world of TBS, even if it's not my favorite one ever. Thank you, M. Thank you. Uh, This was as bite-sized as I like my games these days, and the price was right. Yes. And thank you, Rory. Hey, no worries. Um, Maybe next time I'm on, I'll I'll play the game ahead of time. I'm sorry, I I, I literally have no idea where my Switch is. Uh, It's in a sock drawer or something like that somewhere, but I will try to dig it up at some point. Of course. And it's no problem that this this demo, it's really an odd choice to decide to start your demo midway into the game and then show two battles with the difficulty jacked way up. I don't know that it made this present as well as it could have otherwise, but... At least I got the gist, which is, I guess, what you... That's the number one thing with a demo. So, again, thank you, listeners. Uh, you can get in touch with the show at DeepListensPod on Twitter, DeepListens.Libson.com. We have our comment sections and DeepListensPodcast at gmail.com. Uh, you can also support the show on Patreon.com slash DeepListens. Thank you, everyone. Until next time, peace.